Hello guys. Can you hear me? <clears throat> okay, uh, so we will start the class. It's already it is seven seven five p.m. So today we will discuss and we will complete the soil classification part. Uh, you can say actually there is, there is a unified soil classification system that is called USC system. Okay. Uh, our Indian standard class soil classification system is derived from this USC, unified soil classification system. And the code uh, for this classification, Indian standard classification is, the code which we use is IS 1498. Okay. So, this is widely used in India. Also, the criteria behind uh, classifying the soil, uh, the involving criteria are grain size distribution data. One is grain size distribution data, which I have told you, it is, uh, it comes from sieve analysis. Okay. Sieve analysis, <coughs> what, what is the graph? Percentage finer on y axis, and this is x axis is log, and this is uh, um, size of the sieve. So, we will get graph something like this. Then, by using that, we will find out d30, d10, d10 sorry d30 and d60 uh, it is just like that 10% uh, taking 10% we will draw one line then that corresponding size is d10 then like that 30 60 then by using these we will find out coefficient of uniformity coefficient of curvature so i told you the range uh, which gives the well graded poorly graded uh, gradation so uh, well graded means you have to have all sizes poorly graded means you will have only one single size uniformly graded or poorly graded this i have discussed already so another uh, criteria is which involves in classification is utterberg limits utterberg limits under which we uh, have shrinkage limit i told you this plastic limit uh, liquid limit uh, so it basically water content okay we will find out water content of the soil and we know what is liquid limit what is plastic limit what is shrinkage limit for that particular soil okay how to there are some uh, uh, laboratory tests to find out liquid limit you have to use cassegrain apparatus to find out the liquid limit of particular clay and also uh, plastic limit test involves making 3 mm diameter soil uh, threads then uh, there is a test procedure you can go through in a textbook i am just giving a brief idea how to find out some limits and shrinkage limit also it involves in uh, um, taking a small container where you uh, pour saturated and then you will dry it 
then you will replace that dry soil with uh, kerosene and all it's a procedure you have to go through any textbook so i i am not uh, actually covering those procedures but taking any clay it has uh, some properties so properties there are some limits for a clay for a clay there are some you know, uh, pro like you can say uh, water content is defined as water content is defined as weight of sorry weight of water divided by weight of solids okay into 100 so in any uh, soil sample if you take any soil sample saturated soil sample or any it's like partially saturated it doesn't matter but some moisture is there then you take the weight of this then you uh, put it in oven so that you can dry this sample then after drying you again take the weight of the sample so the difference between the weights is weight of water and the dry sample weight you can keep it in the denominator then you will get the water content of that sample so if you keep on adding what will happen it will become saturated after becoming saturated i have given uh, one uh, diagram in the last class something like this okay see this is full just it has reached fully saturated condition so that is shrinkage limit so after reaching fully saturated condition then what happens see this is the dry sample volume if you take a sample okay it has some voids you can take dry sample okay it has some voids of course so this volume including voids and volume of solids everything that is vd it is vd it's dry just dry it's not solid so i'm not talking about v solids that is we cannot find out v solids directly because you cannot take each grain and you cannot find out you can find theoretically but in, you can find out uh, volume of dry sample just by taking dry sample in a container container of known volume that's dry sample so now if you pour water i said the water will be filled in the voids first without increasing the volume so when you are pouring the water what happens water content this is water content let us say x axis y axis is volume okay this is volume now initially it is equal to dry sample volume initially any sample then what happens when you uh, pour the water water content will increase from zero right but the volume will not increase until it becomes fully saturated just fully saturated so that fully saturated condition is shrinkage limit so when you try to pour more water after reaching saturation also then what happens <coughs> these soil sample uh, soil solids will try to detach from each other then they will just float everywhere okay they, the attachment or the connection between the particles slowly gets uh, they slowly gets detached because of that total volume will also increase okay along with the water content now what happens when the water content is still increasing the volume also will increase so at, at certain point what happens it uh, during see this is uh, solid state you can say this state is solid state this is semi solid state so at uh, when it is in semi solid state at certain point what happens from this state to it will tra uh, transform to plastic state okay that state is called plastic limit then one at one particular point it will become uh, it will transform from plastic state to liquid state that point where uh, it is changing that is liquid limit so that water content so you can find out by using the tests what are the what is the plastic limit liquid limit shrinkage limit for a particular soil now we know the utterberg limits also now that is one criteria and the third criteria involves <coughs> compressibility characteristics okay the third i will write here only compressibility characteristics okay of that soil uh, low compressible medium compressible highly compressible these are the characteristics of the compressibility so if you know all these things you can classify any soil so now uh, let us let me just wait 
so i have actually this in uh, uh, started this in the previous to previous class i i think so taking a soil to classify the soil what do you do first to classify the soil first we need to know whether it is fine grained or coarse grained so for that what do you do uh, to uh, measure fines whether it is fine or not you need 75 micron sieve okay 75 micron size sieve taking that sieve what do you do you will sieve it if this is 75 micron let us say if more than 50% is going down that means passing more than 50% greater than or equal to that means it is finer it is saying that it is finer if the percentage of fines is greater than greater than or equal to 50 uh, for this 75 micron that is fine grain soil if it is less than 50 it is coarse grain soil so that's how it is so first what do you do you will let us say i'll there are majorly three different things one is fine grain one is coarse grain and one is highly organic okay highly organic material or soil okay now how do we find out whether it is coarse grain or uh, fine grain you will take uh, soil here then if the fine these are fines if this is 75 micron you have to use 75 micron see these are fines these are coarse if this is greater than or equal to 50 you have to go this side if this is greater than or equal to 50 if don't forget if okay 50% of the total sample you have to go this side now you understood how to divide this then after if it is fine then there will be three types of soils under fine okay what is that one is silt one is clay and other one is organic organic soils <coughs> this is denoted by m silt clay is denoted by c organic soils is denoted by o highly organic soils are denoted by ho okay <coughs> now how to divide this fine grain soil or how to classify whether it is silt or clay or organic that we will i will tell you in the one for the next part of the class so now coming to the coarse grain in the coarse grain now you understood it is coarse grain because of this condition now what are the things which are involved uh, then next what are the different types under coarse grain one is gravel which is denoted by g another one is sand okay s yes. now <clears throat> what you have to do whether if it is gravel or sand to find out that you have to take 4.75 mm sieve this time taking that uh, whatever sample you have taken initially okay the total sample you take taking that again put it here okay some will pass some will stay here okay now these are gravels these are sands which are passing if the par whatever percentage finer compared to this if it is greater than 50 you can take you can tell total soil is sand if this is greater than 50 okay you can tell total soil is gravel now you understood how to divide this and this now i told you under gravel also there are four again what are those four one is well graded well graded gravel gw another one is poorly graded this gp another one is silty gravel that means silt content is there the finer content is there in the gravel silt gravel that is called you can uh, check it as you can take it as gm because silt is m gravel is g so here silty gravel you remember whenever you say silty gravel clay gravel or clay sand silty sand whatever is that first term it it carries less percentage in the total soil there is less percentage of the silt and it is majorly gravel it is gravel but it is silty gravel so that's why major percentage is gravel which is suffix and prefix is 
silty. Silty is the prefix will uh, carry less percentage. Then another one is clay gravel. Okay, clay gravel that is GC, right? Because clay is C. So here in this GM, the symbol we are putting G first because it is gravel. That's why. In the same way, sand also has SW, well graded soil, well graded sand, poorly graded sand, SP, silty sand, SM, clay sand, SC. Right? Like that, there are another four here. Now, coming to silt, clay, organic, how are they divided? Okay. Silt is divided again. <coughs> low compressible silt okay depending upon the compressibility now uh, i can again go back see i have used grain size distribution for to stay to tell that it is fine grain grain uh, coarse grain for that i have used sieve analysis so that's how i divided into different parts then i have used utterberg limits <coughs> utterberg limits uh, i will be using to tell low compressible silt or uh, medium compressible silt or highly compressible silt highly compressible silt so for this if it is silt ml low compressible l silt is m like that this is mi mi because it is medium you can say it as intermediate okay highly is mh so like that you can divide the compressibility can be found out from the water contents okay that's how you can say compressibility characteristics and the work limits will come into picture now if if it is low compressible ml mid intermediate compressible mi like that clay is also divided into another three how cl low compressible ci intermediate compressible ch highly compressible clay <coughs> now can you tell me how many groups we have in this soil four here in the gravel four in the sand okay four in the sand silt three clay three okay clay three clay three organic also organic soils also we have another three what are those ol voi oh so here also three now here one highly organic soils now how many groups are there 4 plus 4 8 plus 3 11 plus 3 14 plus 3 17 plus 1 18 so total how many groups are there total according to is indian standard class soil classification system classification system there are 18 groups possible okay <coughs> now we will enter slowly deeper now <coughs> we will find out uh, liquid limit let us say we will find out the liquid limit of that particular soil sample see if it is coarse grain soil if you are getting more than uh, 50 percent is 75 micron above above 75 micron then in that case majorly by using sieve analysis itself you can find out uh, whether it is uh, poorly graded soil or well graded soil so majorly c analysis involving in coarse grain soil if you find out if it is fine grain soil then what you have to do immediately you will have to go for some tests uh, utterberg limit test uh, one of them is majorly liquid limit that is you can write or wl so water content at liquid limit or liquid limit directly ll both are water contents if liquid limit is sorry is less than 35 percent that is called as low compressible soil low compressible soil now you find out this is fine grain soil from by using sieve after finding what you have to do you have to find out liquid limit uh, of that then after finding lim liquid limit if you uh, get the liquid limit is 35 percent less than 35 percent you can say it as low compressible whether it is clay silt or organic that we can divide later first whether it is a low compressible or high compressible or uh, intermediate compressible you can directly find out so if wl is in between 30 to 50 that is intermediate compressible 
ओके इंटरमीडिएट कंप्रेस वॉल इफ डब्ल्यू एल इज ग्रेटर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट दैट इज हाईली कंप्रेसिबल हाईली कंप्रेसिबल सॉइल राइट नाउ वी नो नाउ whether it is highly intermediate or high but whether it is ch cl ci we have mh ml mi and oh ol oi but out of them whether it is c m or o we know what is h l m from here okay but whether uh, whether it is c or uh, m or o for that we need uh, atterberg limits um uh, soil classification chart that is okay that chart has in x on x axis on x axis you will have ip ip is i told you ip is plasticity index in the last class plasticity index so how to find out ip ip is nothing but wl minus wp plastic limit liquid limit minus plastic limit okay that is called ip so after finding ip you can you can find out ip by using liquid limit and plastic limit so that is on the y axis that should be in the percentage then the uh, x axis is only liquid limit okay only liquid limit it's not water content you have to find out liquid limit of that soil so you can find out where is that so now if you see so let us divide first 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 okay <coughs> there is a line okay that is called atterberg uh, line or uh, you can say that line pass through passes through x axis at 20 it touches x axis at 20 this is a straight line this is also called ip line okay this is also called ip line so this uh, a line this is called a line also ip line which gives the information of ip okay that information is 0.73 that equation of this line is 0.73 wl minus 20 okay now if this line equation is 0.73 multiplied i'll write clearly 0.73 multiplied wl minus 20 where it is in percentage okay you wl should be so now as the equation is this if you put 20 in place of wl in this equation you have to get ip 0 right this is ip line okay you have to get ip 0 can you get if you put 20 20 minus 20 0 so you are getting Zero IP. That's why IP should be zero and WL should be twenty. This is one line. This is called A line, which gives the information of IP. Okay, it's like y equal to mx plus c or y equal to mx, uh, something like that. Okay. Now, what you have to do is so in this thirty-five, as we have already know. we have known this less than 35 in between 30 to 50 let us divide that if it is 35 wl only liquid limit this is 35 and 35 to 50 and greater than 50 so now what is this less than 35 it is low compressible right or not so i'll use red pen low compressible <coughs> this side is low compressible this side is highly compressible and this is intermediate but whether it is cl ml or mhch or clay organic 
and silt <coughs> how to divide that if it is above this line the condition of the soil is falling above this line a line that is clay and so then what happens this portion will become cl low compressible clay this is intermediate compressible clay this is highly compressible clay so if it is falling below this line then it is low compressible silt or organic see it is m ml or oil this is m i r o i this is m h r o h see now you cannot differentiate between silt and organic if it is falling below a line you can just use ml mi mh instead of ol oa oi this is r okay okay you can use ml mi mh only no need to use ol oa oh now you know how to divide into clay and silt by using this line okay now let us what about less than 20 percent see if it is greater than 20 percent this line this particular line a line can divide into clay and uh, silt this is silt see this is silt this is clay a line can divide but a line is starting from only 20 okay before 20 a line is not uh, making any uh, part uh, this participation of a line is not there to classify the soil then what you have to do there are some another things you can say uh, what i'll do uh, let us say this is 10 this is 20 ip ip is also in percentage because ll minus pl <coughs> now <coughs> 4 to 7 if this is 7 if this is 4 okay this is 4 percent this is 7 percent if it is falling in between this IP, okay, sorry, and 10, this portion, this particular portion is CL and ml if somebody asks what is the soil classification you have to give cl dash ml this portion how to find out this portion you will be given wl and wp wp that means ll and pl plastic limit then <coughs> for that clay <coughs> then you will find out ip first ip is what wl minus wp after finding <coughs> What do you do? This is yeah. This is the IP of the clay. This is IP of the clay by using this is this is real <coughs> real uh, plasticity index plasticity index of that clay of our soil of soil by using this formula. But what is this IP? A line IP. A line IP is something different. It's not IP of the uh, soil. IP of the soil will come from this. That is on the y-axis. This is on the y-axis. But A line AP, if you go for this WL, whatever WL, if you go for that and putting it in this equation, you will get A line AP, IP. That A line IP value decides whether it is clay or M or clay or silt. Now, <coughs> what did I do? First, I find found out <coughs> WL. Then I found out WL is less than 20, let us say. Okay. Then what you have to do? You have to find out IP. Then IP is falling, suppose, in between this 4 to 7. Then you can say, definitely this belongs to cl and ml because it is falling in between this and also you can say it is above you will find out ip from this let us say this is uh, let us say this is uh, uh, some six six percentage okay <coughs> now uh, w l 
uh, IP value is let us say it is uh, IP value is let us say 4 okay now real IP is greater than a line IP line means the real IP will fall above this that means See, a line IP value is 4. If you put WL, you have got 4, let us say. So, the 4 is somewhere here. But your real IP value is 6. That means, that is above this line. Okay. The line is giving one value. You are getting another value. That another value, real value is above this line. That's how you found out, find out whether it is clear. If suppose IP value, you have got 3. Whereas, IP line is giving 4 value from the equation but real IP value is 3 that means it is falling below then you can say this as silt so that's how you will find out the uh, above or below thing this is just an example for that now <coughs> this uh, for this portion if it is falling below uh, in between 4 and 7 if it is falling above a line or else if it is the if the WL is less than 20 and greater than 10 so depending upon this you can classify the soil is c element now what about this portion what about this portion this portion is this portion is okay, i'll use this portion is only sorry this portion is ml okay this total portion is ml if it is falling between 0 and 7 okay and the wl is value is less than 20 and also it is not falling in between this okay then that case it is ml and remaining is cl this is cl this portion is ml this portion is ml and this portion is cl okay and remaining things we can find out from this chart so that is how the soil classification is done coming to clay silt organic okay now coming to uh, gravel sand by using majorly by using sieve analysis now whether it is silt sand or clay sand i will tell you how to divide that now you understood how to divide low compressible medium compressible highly compressible i will give you the examples uh, examples how to do that like some um, uh, problems okay now uh, coming to highly organic how to find out highly organic soil you will do see this is let us say highly organic soil what do you do you will do color test color test you have to get dark color okay and another one is um, sm uh, smell test or order test that is that should be very bad order okay and then <coughs> you have to find out the liquid limit liquid limit uh, find, after finding the liquid limit, what you have to do is uh, one you have to find out liquid limit at uh, you know, taking the sample then also after oven drying you have to oven dry the sample okay after oven drying the sample in the oven then again add water again find out the liquid limit see th this is before oven, before oven drying after oven drying after doing that what happens after oven drying some particles gets oxidized then because of that wl will decrease drastically so before oven drying suppose it is lay it is say it is 50 percent after oven drying it is maybe 30 percent it is not around 49 48 so that we can say uh, wl is intact so after oven drying if it is like drastically decreasing then also you can say it is highly organic soil so what is that how much you have to tell so uh, that it's not just 30 i have given example what you have to do is if it decreases more than 25 percent of its initial what is the 25 percent of this 50 percent uh, uh 25 percent is 12.5 right so 12 out of this 50 original wl if it decreases by this much that means uh, 50 minus 12.5 is uh, 37.5 if you get less than 35 by 35 point 37.5 percent you can say that it is 
highly organic soil. So now you found out whether it is organic soil or highly organic soil or not, whether it is clay, silt, everything. But suppose if you get, <coughs> I'll give you one border things. Suppose there is a point, I'll take uh, blue color. So there is a point like this. This is one point. Another point is, let us say it is here. This is first point. This is second point. And third point, let us say it is here. And let us say another fourth point is at this point. Why I am giving these points? Let us see. This point is falling in between two different classifications. It is clay. It is above the IP line. It is clay. But whether it is intermediate clay or low compressible clay, we don't know. Right? This is one border case. Another border case, it, is, it, is, it, it may be CI, it may be CH. And other, other case is this third point is, it is intermediate uh, compressible clay, uh, con compressible soil. But whether it is CI or MI, we don't know. And an another one is, it is connecting four things. One is uh, CI, one is uh, CH, another one is MI, another one is MH, this point. So in that case, let us go for uh, just a minute. See now, okay, I can use this. Okay, now first point. First point is uh, CL and CA. You just have to use both symbols CL and CA. These are called dual symbols. Okay, if something is falling. At this point, you have to use CLC. If something is falling, it is CICH. CICH. What about the third point? Third point, it is MICA. Okay. You have to use MICA. You can ask, why can't I use CIMI? See, this is wrong. This is right. Because you have to give the preference to coarser soil always. Whenever you are getting coarser and finer in a particular soil sample, you are feeling it may be coarser, it may be finer. You have to give always preference to the coarser first. That's why I am giving MICI. Silt is coarser than clay. Always. So that's why. Okay. Uh, you remember that silt is coarser compared to compared to clay so that's why it is mica now you can use only two symbols you cannot use four symbols but it is covering all four it is covering ci ch mi mh okay can somebody tell you uh, tell me what is uh, symbol i have to use for fourth for this, can someone tell me what is the symbol can I use for this fourth point? If soil classification is falling at this point, you are getting WL50, you are getting IP, this IP equal to this IP. Okay, this IP is not greater than this IP, let us say. That means if this IP is greater than this line, then what happens? You can take this is above, but this y axis is same as that of IP line. That means they are coinciding. Okay. Also, WL is 50. So your point is at 4 now. What symbol should we use? Did anyone write in the chat box? See here, as you have to give preference to coarser. You will use MI, MH without knowing that dual symbol is only dual symbol is allowed. What do you do? You will write CI, CH. Somebody has written anything? OL, MH, CH. Somebody has written OL, MH, CH. OL, MH, CH. Okay. Let me check. OL, MH, CH. Or OH, MHCH. 
no 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 see so this is the okay at least you have tried that is very good so this is the symbol general symbol we have to give for four because it is covering four regions which are m i m h c i c h m i m h c i c h why did i write m i m h first because they are coarser than clay that's why i have written both front then these both later now i have to give only dual symbols so i am cutting these two so you have to give, give preference only to the coarser then you have to give in the order m i m h so the fourth one should be m i m h okay it cannot be m i m h c h c so now you understood how to divide if it falls on the border okay any border you can give depending upon the coarser and finer so now i'll give you a simple uh, problems uh, to find out let us solve this problem okay example 1 is w l is 60% okay that means liquid limit is given 60% plastic limit is given as 20% okay now what is the soil name soil classification soil name can somebody tell me so you can use ip line so you you, you can find out ip w l minus w p okay first i'll solve this okay i am finding ip value 60 minus 20 this is 40 okay the real ip plasticity index is 40 now a line ip a line ip value is if you put 0.73 multiplied by wl minus 20 equal to 0.73 wl is 60 minus 20 is 0 0.73 into 60 minus 20 40 okay oh, so what is the value it is uh, 29.2 see 29.2 is see don't think that w p is always 20 here in this case w p is coincided with this empirical formula 20 it may be 25 sometimes so it may be sometimes 45 you can say if it is 45 60 minus 45 our ip would have been uh, 60 minus 45 ip would have been 15 in that case so in that case ip value is a line ip value is more than the ip real ip in this case ip is 40 now a line ip is 29.2 now you can say ip is greater than a line ip right or not from this that means our point falls above a line now our point falls above a line right as it is falling above a line that is clay I am just right now I am deciding it as clay that means it is C anything can happen later things can change now one thing is over what is the other thing our WL is 60 so our WL is 60 WL is 60 which is greater than 50 okay greater than 50 means what then highly compressible highly compressible that means now you can write it as ch right or not so it is greater than 60 greater than 60 also above ip line it will become ch if it is below ip uh, a line if it is greater than 60 it would have been mh so now that's how we will classify so we'll solve another problem We will solve another problem here. Example 2. WL is 20 percentage. WP is 15 percentage. What is the soil name? So, what do you have to do? WL minus WP equal to IP 20 minus 15. Sorry, I am using 
so it is 5% okay now as it is 5% is it less than 20 sorry not that we have to consider we have to see this so it is 5 it is falling between 4 and 5 okay it is falling between 4 and 5 4 and 7 also it is less it is equal to 20 go here it is equal, wl is equal to 20 now it is equal to 20 it is the ip y axis is falling in between 4 and 7 so if i go 4 and 7 the 5 so my soil is cl ml is there any doubt for the uh, in this uh, question you can ask if you have any doubt in this Any doubt? You can uh, write in the chat box. Cleared. Okay, fine. So now, uh, coming back to well graded soil, poorly graded soil, or silty gravel or uh, clay gravel silty sand clay sand well graded sand poorly graded sand now what did you understand you understood from these two uh, uh, examples you know how to find out a line ip you know how to find out real ip if real ip falls above ip line it is clay if it falls below ip line uh, a line it is um, silt that's how you can give symbols if it is falling on the border you can you know how to give the symbols so that's how you know how to classify fine grain soil clay silt organic now coming to the coarse grain soil which involves in gravel sand where gravel both are same the classification for both are same how to do gw gp and uh, silty gravel or clay gravel in the same way sw sp sm sc okay now uh, let me come to the gw point of view or sw okay now what you have to do is you have to calculate the fines okay fines means you know what are the fines the fines are called which are passing through the 75 micron sieve see just because it is gravel doesn't mean that it doesn't have any fines okay it, there are some fines the only thing is it can be sand or gravel because greater than 50 percent are falling above 75 okay but how much is passing it is it 5 and 95 is it 49 and 51 or it is 45 and 55 we don't know but there are some fines are existing okay in the gravel soil also there are some fines you have to find out the fine percentage by using the 75 micron soils these are called fines after finding the percentage of the fines in the uh, total sample first point if fines let us say fine so you have to write always if here if first point fines are less than five percent okay less than five percent now if fines are less than five percent what happened you neglect it you are neglecting there are no fines you are thinking in that case now what are the gw gp and g silt g clay fines are majorly what silt or clay so when fines are less than five percent people take it as negligible then they don't call it as silty gravel or clay gravel so they are uh, eliminating these two because it is uh, fines are very less so it might fall only in between well graded or poorly graded so now uh, in this only if the fines are less than five percent and and cu is greater than four okay and other one is cc it is lying between one and three if all these are satisfying fines are less than five percent cu is great i don't i told you how to find out cu from the grain uh, size distribution curve 
I you know how to find out CC. I have told you in the last class. If you find out CU, CC, if you find out fines, if all these are satisfying, it is well graded uh, gravel or well graded sand. Okay. Now, if whether it's GP or SP, if first point, fines are again it should be less than 5% only because I am still talking about gravel only, poorly graded or well graded. I am not talking about silty or clay. That's why fines should be still less than 5%. And second point should be, it's not meeting. Second point is nothing but uh, uh, CU and CC are not meeting above criteria. Okay this above criteria is if it is not falling in between this range or greater than four but still fines are less than five percent then it will become poorly graded so if it is meeting it is well graded now you understood how to divide into gw and sw now what is another one is gm and that is silty gravel so in this case if fines are fine should be more than the five percent but it's not just greater than 5%. The other uh, the thing is, if fines are greater than 12 percentage, okay. I'll talk about what is 5 to 7, 5 to 12. If they are falling 5 to 12, what should we do? That I'll tell. But if fines are greater than 12, okay. Now, after uh, falling, after the, we understood it is gravel first because of the C1 analysis. After finding the gravel, we are finding whether it is silty gravel or uh, uh, well graded, poorly graded or clay gravel. Then we found out what are the fines. We got it is greater than 12%. So after we have got greater than 12%, we are eliminating these two. Okay. It may be well graded, it may be poorly graded. But above that, it is silty because of the percentage. Okay. Silty or clay. Okay. Now, fines are greater than 12% as well as um, as well as the second point should be IP. It should be less than 4 percentage. Okay. Or Utterberg limits fall below A line. Utterberg limits fall below A line. So you will find out IP value. After finding IP value, if directly IP is less than 4% or the line equation, uh, after finding the equation, okay, see, uh, you go here. See, if it is directly less than 4, let us say, then you can directly say it is GM. But if it is uh, not less, uh, uh, if it is not less than 4, if it is not less than 4 IP, then what do you have to do? You have to compare with A line. When you compare with A line, so, if IP is less than the IP of A line, uh, one of these two conditions should satisfy along with this greater than 12 percent, then it is GM. And another one is what? GC. In GC, what you have to do? Again, it is fine only. Again, fine percent should be, we are talking about still finer sample, uh, silty gravel or clay gravel. That is the reason why fine should be again 12%, greater than 12%. But what about this second condition? The second condition is IP should be greater than 7. Greater than 7. <coughs> or, or our real IP should be greater than IP of A line. So if IP of A line is greater than IP of uh, IP, real IP is greater than IP of A line, we already know that it is clay. So, if it is clay, uh, so clay percentage is more than the silt percentage in that way. So, it is clay gravel. So, if IP is falling less than A line, then it is uh, silt as we know. So, if the uh, fines are greater than 12, so that's how it is GM or GC. If fines are less than 5, it will become only gravel, well graded or poorly graded depending upon the gradation representations now if 
another point comes into picture you can ask that if fines are if fines are between 4 and 7 percentage it is border case it is nothing but border case then you have to use dual symbol right because <coughs> sorry it's uh, ip i'm talking about ip okay so here ip less than 4 ip greater than 7 we talked if ip falls uh, in between 4 and 7 we didn't discuss about that no when the fines are greater than 12 but ip is ip is falling between 4 and 7 so you have to use dual symbol what is the dual symbol it can be uh, if you go uh, there cl ml so here what is it showing that it is low compressible clay or low compressible silt but what are we talking about here we are talking about gm or gc whether it is low compressible clay or low compressible silt is not matter we have to use g first okay because it is gravel majorly and uh, ip is falling 4 to 7 so then you have to use gm gc gm gc it can be silt it can be clay you have to use gm gc if if we are not fine sorry if this is not fine this is ip now if fines are falling in between 5 and 12 percentage like in between whether it is well graded or poorly graded or silty gravel or clay gravel now in between this it is 5 to 12 percentage of fines in that case we will have again dual symbols what are those possible dual symbols it can be well graded gravel and silty uh, gravel for that what you will do you will do all the tests you will find out the fines you are getting fines in between this you will find out the cucc you will find out ip values you will find out ip of a lines you will find out everything so then after finding everything if it is falling here and here then it is gw and uh, if it is falling here and here and here it is gw gm if it is falling here okay then here and here it is nothing but gp gm if it is falling here and here and here gp gc there are four combinations for possible gw gm gp gm or gw gc or gp gc like that so now you understood what are how to divide uh, you can just replace g as g with s that's it if it is sand so like that we will classify the soil so uh, we will solve some uh, one or two problems uh, in the next class uh, do you have any doubt in this now Do you have any doubt here? So, can I close the session? Yeah, okay, then we'll see you in the next class.